Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to terraform Earth's natural satellite, the Moon. In other words, the Moon will become alive. All of this will be demonstrated using the Universe Sandbox Simulator. Let's go! Let's take a look at a day on the Moon. It's said that a day on the Moon lasts over 27 days. That's one day on the Moon. In other words, that's an extremely slow rotation on its axis. I'm going to launch asteroids like this. You can even launch them a bit lower, so that a small tip appears on the moon as well. This way, we can effectively spin up this particular satellite and significantly shorten its day. Take a closer look at precisely how this process works, how the day genuinely gets shorter. You can see all of this right here. I'll keep launching them like this until I get the day length to more or less normal reasonable values. And that's it. Now our moon is spinning very well, and a day on the moon is almost 26 hours long. And of course, there's no avoiding the craters left after those collisions when I was launching asteroids. Here we can see this kind of trail, craters on the moon. Next, I'll add a magnetic field to the moon and set the gravity to 1g. Now we have a good magnetic field, which will protect the moon from the sun's harmful effects. And now it's time to create an atmosphere and oceans on this satellite. So I placed such an object here, or rather launched it at the moon. Here are the elements it contains. I added to this object's composition the components necessary for forming an atmosphere. Here we have argon, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. I also didn't forget about water, which along with the atmosphere should appear on the surface of the moon. And all of this needs to be launched at a low speed, so that it collides with the moon gently, without causing harm or destroying the satellite. Alright then, I'm starting the simulation. As it goes, I'll slow down the speed of this object so that it crashes very slowly. The speed is low now, it's flying little by little. You can even increase the speed a bit in the simulator. Just like that, the object is approaching, I've slowed down the speed. Like this, slower. Basically, you just need to lay this object down on the surface of the moon. And now, the collision is starting. Let's see exactly how the moon will transform as all of this truly enters into it. And as we can see, a wave has started spreading across the water. Here's more. And now the various gases that were also an integral part of this celestial object should be released. Let's watch. Clouds should start to appear, they will. Let's see if life appears right away just like that. That would be quite interesting. I focused on the moon, so we can clearly see what's happening on it from all possible sides. So far the water has only spread at the impact side. I'm speeding up time again. Now clouds are appearing as we can see over the ocean that has formed. Oh it's so nice to watch all this. Well, let's see how the moon is transforming before our screens. I'll speed up time again. I've sped up time again, and now the gas is visibly appearing. The one that truly should have appeared much earlier, but is only now finally showing up and starting to completely cover everything. Let's watch. Whoa, and here we have life. Let me show you in more detail. I'll hide the atmosphere and clouds from view. And here, as you can see, we have life here. For now, it's only along the coastline. Well, that's already a good sign that terraforming will work. This is awesome and incredible. Look, it's spreading more and more, continuously moving ever inland. Cool. Right now the temperature is being set here. While all this is happening, we shouldn't forget to adjust the average albedo. I think it should be somewhere around 0.25 here. I'm not sure exactly, but at the very least it should be higher than before, not like it was. Let's see what the moon looks like. I turned on the flashlight, a tool in Universe Sandbox, to examine all parts of the satellite. We can see that clouds have basically covered the entire satellite, even the poles, but it seems like there are more gases on the side where the water is. So to avoid waiting, I'll distribute the gas evenly, all across the surface of the moon. And now, as you can see, the moon has turned completely green everywhere, literally everywhere. That's incredible. And we also need to distribute the water evenly across the surface of the moon. I'll hide the atmosphere and clouds again. Let's see how it all turned out. Well, not bad. There's actually enough water and land. Basically, the difference is quite great, really. The sea level turned out to be just over 9 kilometers. You could say the moon has been terraformed, but there's still something else we need to check. The pressure turned out to be 0.84 atmospheres. Basically, that's not bad. There's a greenhouse effect of 40 degrees Celsius. The current average temperature is about 21 degrees. Now the temperature still needs to be figured out, because if we speed up time, it might still change and probably hasn't stabilized yet. I set the simulator to 1 month per second, and let's see where the temperature goes. We can see that it seems to be rising, but it's rising very slowly. That's already good. That means the temperature has most likely stabilized. And as we can see, it's already 22 degrees here. 
Now it seems like the growth is accelerating, but most likely that's because of Earth's uneven orbit. Sometimes it happens like that. And now it seems to be dropping back down. Pressure, like temperature, is increasing a bit slowly. But the process is very slow. If we look at what exactly is increasing in the atmosphere, which gases concentration is rising, we see that it's water vapor. It's possible that water is simply evaporating and slightly saturating the atmosphere more. The other elements, such as nitrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen and argon, are behaving normally and are not increasing. Only the concentration of water vapor is changing, which is basically not critical. Wow. Look at the cloud display, it really looks like we have a significant storm on the moon here. Well, it looks impressive. Basically, the average temperature on the moon is around 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is quite a significant range. The atmosphere ended up being 0.9 atmospheres. As a result, after terraforming, the similarity to Earth reached 66%, and the probability of life is almost 16%. Now let's also take a close look at the dark side of the moon, and as we can see people have already settled here, because there are lights from night cities, here, here, and also here. Life is active and thriving on the moon. Let's take a closer look at the surface. I want to see if there's vegetation everywhere here, or if there are places where there's no life. Well, right here is where the collision happened. You see, such a large mountain appeared, and there's ice on it, and at the poles as well. There's ice at the south pole, so there's no life here. And at the North Pole as well, there's something like a significant ice cap and numerous islands that are completely frozen. The rest of the moon is doing quite great and possesses abundant vegetation. Also, at a subscriber's special request, I will give the moon its very own satellite. I'll try to place it at a distance of 15,000 kilometers from the moon. This is how it looks from the outside. Here, I set the characteristics just as that subscriber asked me to. I made the mass 7% of the moon's mass and set the radius to 375 kilometers. That makes the diameter 750 kilometers. Now let's see if the moon can hold onto this satellite. More than one day passes per second, and our satellite is orbiting pretty normally. Basically, time is passing and there's a slight wobble in the orbit. But the moon's orbit around the Earth has started to jump much more noticeably. I also descended to the surface of the terraformed moon. And here we can clearly see there is indeed the Earth, and here is the satellite that is orbiting around the moon, in its trajectory. And this is what the terraformed moon looks like against the backdrop of our planet Earth. So that's how my terraforming of the moon turned out. Please give it a like and let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next experiments.